initial video, uh, kind of guiding people on what they should and shouldn't do um, with their truck regarding bypassing a heat exchanger. Um, if you guys don't know, the heat exchanger basically is mounted on, um, for second gens, it's on the passenger side of the block, for third gens and fourth gens, it's on the driver's side. Some fourth gens have it, some don't. Um, basically, the heat exchanger, that is also known as the torque converter cooler, some people even call it the transmission cooler, which it really isn't. Um, basically, what the heat exchanger does is coolant runs through one side and transmission fluid runs through the other side. They don't touch, they don't mix, they're separated, but they do go near each other to exchange the heat. So it works both ways. The coolant sometimes is hotter and it will give heat to the transmission fluid. The transmission fluid that goes through it will absorb some of the heat from the coolant, thus warming the transmission fluid. Other times when the transmission fluid is hotter and the coolant is colder, the coolant will take some of the heat out of the transmission fluid. So basically, the issue with the whole heat exchanger thing is a lot of times internally they'll fail. So when they do fail, you'll have a nice pink milkshake, Pepto Bismol colored liquid exploding underneath the hood of your truck, and your transmission will probably start slipping and probably need that rebuilt. Basically, what happens, as I said, Internally they fail, coolant goes into your transmission, mixes with your transmission fluid, and then your transmission fluid goes into your engine coolant system and mixes with that. So your whole coolant and your transmission system is going to be full of a mix of transmission fluid and coolant, which is a nice pink strawberry color. So a lot of guys will be like, okay, perfect, let's delete it, let's get rid of it. We'll just go from the transmission straight to the transmission cooler up front. The front mounted cooler that would normally be right here. The, the problem with that is, which I, I promote it, we have this kit right here. Two lines and braided, comes with all the fittings and everything you need to bypass the heat chain, right? So it's great. I bypass mine because I don't want it to fail and destroy the transmission. The problem with it is if you live where it's cold, your transmission fluid isn't going to have a way to get up to operating temperature or maintain that. So when your truck's cold, normal operation, everything's there, it's hooked up to the heat exchanger, all that good stuff, your engine coolant is going to warm up faster. So in return, your transmission fluid will be warmed by the engine coolant. So it'll get your transmission up to temperature when it's cold. That's with the heat exchanger. Now when you bypass it and it's very cold, your engine cool is going to warm up just like you normally would leave it run for 15 minutes or so when it's cold, get it warmed up. The problem with that is your transmission fluid temperature is going to stay the same. It might be 30 degrees, it might be 10 degrees, it might be 5 degrees, who knows. So basically then you're going to be like, oh sweet, the truck's warm, we're going to take it out, drive wherever, do some oil and burn out, some other great stuff, um, stuff Donald Trump would approve. And basically what happens is your transmission fluid is cold. The viscosity is going to be different. As you know, fluids, oils, they expand and contract depending on if they're cold or hot. So basically when it's cold, you're going to have more viscous fluid, it's going to be thicker, and it's not going to shift right. You could blow out a seal, and overall it's just going to put a negative mark on your transmission, if that makes any sense. It's just not good for it. It's damaging. It's not, it's not like you drive it one time, it's gonna, it's gonna destroy your transmission when it's cold. I do it all the time. It's a risk. It's not a good risk. Um, but basically, you'll, have, you'll, you'll basically see your transmission temperature not getting up to temp. And then if you start driving, you can get it up to temp, you know, if you start beating on it, but then you're risking blowing out seals and, um, and other good stuff. So you don't wanna do that. If you live where it's warm, all year round, bypass it. It's a great option. You don't have to worry about the transmission heat exchanger failing, mixing your coolant and your transmission fluid together. But again, you gotta you gotta think about you gotta think about your client. You can't just go ahead and be like, all right, I see you guys posting on Facebook all the time. Should I bypass the heat exchanger or should I keep it? Everyone's like, bypass it, bypass it, bypass it, bypass it. 
Jeez, here we go. No, you need to ask yourself some questions. Do you live where it's cold or do you live where it's hot? What are you going to be doing with the truck? Because if you live where it gets freezing cold, you might not want to buy this. I actually, just the other day, I had a customer call me. He bought the bypass kit, right? He saw it on the internet. He didn't contact me, he just saw it on the internet. Um, which unfortunately, there's a lot of wrong stuff on the internet. There's a lot of good stuff on the internet, but a lot of it's wrong. So he bypassed it and he was on the phone with me and told me he's driving the truck and the transmission temperature won't get above 50 degrees of the outside temperature. I was like, okay, uh, what's the outside temperature? And he was like, negative 40. And I was like, uh, okay, so your transmission temperature right now is 10 degrees. He's like, Yes, I'm like, you might want to shut your truck down and stop driving. That is very, very bad. So, there is one instance of extreme cold where he should not have gotten the bypass kit. He should have gotten the, that they were leaking. His transmission lines were leaking. He should have gotten the non-bypass kit. This is a factory replacement. Comes with all the fittings, three hoses. So it'll go from the transmission to the heat exchanger, from the heat exchanger to the cooler, from the cooler back. Comes with all the fittings and stuff for that. So, you, you got to look again where, where you live, what your climate is, before you just go ahead and read the stuff on the internet and bypass the, the heat exchanger. As of now, we promote both bypassing. If you live where it's warm, you're around, keep it. If you live um, where it gets very cold. We are working on an aftermarket heat exchanger that will not fail. That, will, that should be ready very soon. Very, very soon, actually. Yeah, it's going to be like that. It's going to be awesome. But for the time being, ask yourself the questions. Do you live where it's cold? Do you live where it's hot? And then add in the factor of the heat exchanger could fail at any time and destroy the transmission. So you got to weigh out the options. If you live where it's like medium, kind of where I do, I bypass it. And I go very, very easy on the truck if it's cold. Now, if I lived where it was absolutely freezing cold all the time, I wouldn't keep, or I wouldn't bypass the heat exchanger, I would definitely keep it. So, hopefully this video has some sort of, um, it gives you guys some sort of knowledge towards this, because there's just so much stuff on the internet that just bypass, bypass, bypass. And it's honestly, you guys need to look into all the different variables that go into it, so you're not screwing yourself in the long run. You're like, oh, if I bypass it, it's not gonna fail, destroy my transmission. But yeah, you could go and roll a seal in your transmission, Smoke something, destroy something the first day out with the bypass lines because your transmission temperature is 10 degrees. Now you could keep it and take the risk, maybe replace the heat exchanger with a new one, or very soon, try to not get into that, but very soon when we have our aftermarket heat exchanger that will fail. Um, it's kind of like going to be bulletproof, so we're going to make sure of that. But um, go with the options. You can't just throw whatever at it. Um, but I'll get into the, the other side of the heat exchanger. Um, so you first have your, your first side, this is the non-bypass kit, so this line will go off the transmission right here. It'll connect to the transmission front port, and it'll go and connect it to the heat exchanger. Then you have your other line, it'll connect to the other side of the heat exchanger, and it'll go up to the cooler. Then your other one that goes back. So the coolant lines will go to the heat exchanger. On a Third gen like this, it would be on the driver's side of the block. And basically, we have this heater hose kit that also bypasses the heat exchanger. So if we put this heater hose kit on, it will come with a plug. Oh. One second. It will come with this plug right here. And basically, it will disconnect the factory cool line, the top one. This little one right here goes to the firewall right at the head on the passenger side. And then the bottom one right here will go from the firewall on the passenger side down underneath the manifold and it will connect down to the thermostat housing and down below the alternator. So if you notice, on your factory ones, there's a T on this one that goes back around the head connected to the heat exchanger. And then there's another inlet to the heat exchanger that will go to the driver's side of the bottom one right here. So basically, this plug plugs the coolant from getting out of the block into the heat exchanger. And then this hose will delete the line that goes around back and normally would connect into this and would go up front below the alternator. 
So a lot of people who have the fleece cooled bypass kit already have their interchanger bypass. They might not even know it. Um, that's one thing to think about. We do sell a ton of these heater hose kits. We don't currently have them that keep the heat exchanger, um, although we will actually, <laughs> we were going to, but now that we're making our own heat exchanger, we're, it's gonna have quite a bit different of a setup on there. But um, yeah, so this one, this one bypasses it, that bypasses it. In order to completely remove the heat exchanger itself off the block, you would need the bypass lines for the transmission because your transmission lines connect. And then you would need your bypass lines for the heater hoses, the heater hoses that connect. Um, if you take out, if you want to leave it on there, you want to bypass it. You get the transmission lines to bypass it. You don't have to cap those off or anything um, unless the heat exchanger already failed internally, but in that case, you should pull it off completely. Um, but you would basically just pull your factory lines out, put our um, two lines back in, and that would bypass the transmission side of it, so there'd be no transmission fluid. If it fails and it's still on there, it would just piss coolant out of the transmission ports for the heat exchanger, and then at that point you'd still want to get rid of it or replace it. If you want to bypass the coolant side of it, right here, this kit bypasses the coolant side of it, your transmission fluid will still be running through. Now, if you think about having an issue with reliability, if you bypass the coolant side of it, and you still have transmission fluid running through it, say it does internally rupture, then you're gonna have transmission fluid piss out of the coolant ports that are on the heat exchanger, and your transmission fluid is gonna run low, and then you're gonna slip a little bit, and you're probably gonna pull over, hopefully the trans isn't smoked by then, probably will be. Um, so that's that. Now if you bypass the transmission line, or the heat exchanger transmission side of it, and you get these lines, you put them on there, if the heat exchanger does later on internally rupture, coolant is going to come out. So you'd see your gauge overheat and you'd shut it down. In my opinion, I would rather bypass the transmission side because coolant leaking out is not nearly as bad as your transmission fluid leaking out. As long as you see the gauge, shut it down immediately. Um, neither are great, but I personally would do the transmission lines. Um, and then if you want it completely gone, again, both of these kits, it's gone. If you want to keep it, this kit right here, and we probably we will come out with the heat exchangers that tee off to, go to the heat exchanger, the factory one, um, for guys who already have this. And then uh, guys who have the bypass kit already, who do inevitably want to add a heat exchanger back into their truck if they live where it's colder, um, we will have that aftermarket heat exchanger very soon. And uh, it'll be sold as like a little kit, it'll be pretty easy to install, um, and it'll do a very good job. So hopefully that told you guys a little bit about the heat exchanger, heater hoses, transmission lines, how it works basically. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that that's just about it for this video. Uh, you really just want to you want to know how all this stuff works so that if you do have a failure, you understand why or you can prevent the failure from happening to begin with. Um, again, the heat exchanger is great. I'm a fan of it. It's just sad that it fails. Um, I mean, theoretically, the heat exchanger should cool the transmission fluid, but at the end of the day, that's another big question. Does the heat exchanger cool it? If I delete it, will my transmission overheat? The heat exchanger really doesn't do much cooling at all. Um, it does more heating than anything. That's, that's what I'm worried about. If you've noticed this whole video, I'm talking about it warming up the transmission fluid. Actually cooling the fluid down, it doesn't do much of a job at all. Usually I actually see a temp drop even in the summertime uh, with it bypassed because basically you have your coolant going through it. Say your coolant is 190 degrees and then say you have transmission fluid that comes through it that's 200 degrees. Your 200, 200 degree transmission fluid is going to go through the heat exchanger and you're not really going to see a temp drop because the, the temperature differential is so close. It's only 10 degrees. You're not going to see much of a temp drop at all. Now, if you had 500 degree transmission fluid and we're just, we're just throwing numbers here, 500 degree transmission fluid and 20 degree coolant and it went through there, you would see that 500 degrees drop crazy fast. One of the most efficient ways to 
cool fluid is by flow to fluid cooling, um, like a heat exchanger. But unfortunately, in this case, the scenario that we're in, it does more heating than anything because, again, the temperature differential is not large enough for you to see a giant decrease. Um, so that's about all I have on the heat exchangers, transmission lines, cooling hoses. Um, I'm going to put this video up basically just for my customers who are watching this. Um, when you ask me, should I bypass the heat exchanger or not, there's a lot that goes into it. It's not a yes or no question. It's a where do you live, what's the climate like, what do you do with the truck, do you drive in the winter, do you only drive in the summer. There's a lot of different stuff that goes into this. So hopefully this gives you guys quite a bit more knowledge on what you should or shouldn't do or which route you should go with um, your truck and keeping it reliable as possible. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will catch you guys later.